Hey everyone, it's your girl. That's right, it's Tuesday. And you know what happens on Tuesday, right? It's another Tuesday, another tip with it's your girl. Hashtag J Loan. That's right, I'm in the building and I'm coming to give you some information today. And I wanted to really touch base again on uh, student loans. Uh, there's been a lot of talk and I'm seeing a lot of um, like messages uh, about what's going to happen with uh, the Biden student loan um, plan. And if we're going to get rid of some student loans, um, are people going to have to start paying their student loans? And so I think it's very important for me to go back through the rules and the guidelines that have to do with mortgages and student loans. And the reason why is because when I talk to a borrower, the first thing they say when I ask about student loans is they say, well, um, I haven't had to pay them since uh, 2020. And so they think that because they're not paying them, that we don't have to include them when it comes to getting them qualified for a mortgage. And so I just want to kind of touch base on that so that everyone can see that even though this has been extended and you're not making payments, um, it's no different as it, it, than when they're deferred um, or when you're in forbearance or anything like that. The rules for mortgages still apply. So I'm going to share my screen real quick and I'm going to make myself really small and I just want to go over those guidelines, okay? Uh, really quickly, so give me a second. All right, so this is the student loan payment matrix, and it breaks it down by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, and USDA, okay? And it says, can deferred student loan payment be omitted? And it says on Fannie, Freddie, FHA, no, 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 USDA, no, and VA is the only one that says yes, but it must be deferred a minimum of 12 months from your note date, okay? So your note date obviously is when you're closing your loan, it has to be um, deferred 12 months from that date, all right? Or they, will, they cannot be omitted, okay? Then it says, if a monthly student loan payment is provided on the credit report, must this amount be used for qualifying purposes? Every one of them, Fannie, Freddie, FHA, VA, and USDA answers yes. Okay, moving on down, it says, if repayment is to begin, but payment is not available yet, what payment calculation can be used? All right, and then it says, what payment do we use for graduated payment plan? And then also when loan is in forbearance, what payment calculation should be used, okay? So I'm gonna put this right here so we can kind of see everything and I'll move myself up some, okay? So on Fannie, it says, if there is no payment on the credit report, use 1% of the balance, even if this amount is lower than the actual fully amortized payment, or fully amortizing payment using the documented loan repayment terms. That means we have documentation from the student loan provider and it specifically says cannot be zero. So when we pull credit reports, it most likely for a lot of people, it says zero. So if it says zero, this is what applies right here, okay? Then it says, and Freddie Mac, if no payment is on the credit report, use the higher of 0.5% of the balance or the actual verified payment cannot be zero. So again, we can use 0.5% or you can get documentation from the student loans that says, hey, when these loans come out of forbearance, this is what the estimated payment will be and we have that documentation, but again, cannot be zero, okay? FHA says if no payment on the credit report, use 0.5% of the balance, or again, the actual verified payment cannot be zero, all right? 
VA gets a little tricky, but it's easy math, all right? Greater of 5% of the balance shown on the credit report divided by 12 monthly payments or the actual payment. Again, the key is it cannot be zero, okay? Cannot be zero. Now, USDA says the greater of 0.5% of the balance or the actual documented payment. Again, if you notice what's very in common for all of these is that it cannot be zero. So just because you're not paying it um, or there is no payment right now, the reality is we cannot use zero, okay? So I'm gonna scroll down some more because there's always more questions. And it says when a loan is in an income-based repayment plan or an IBRP, what payment calculation should be used, okay? So our first row, just so we in order, is Fannie Freddie FHA, okay? So Fannie said, uh oh, sorry. So Fannie said, for student loans associated with an income-driven uh, repayment plan, the student loan payment as listed on the uh, credit report is the actual payment the borrower's making and that payment should be used in qualifying. Any future increases in the IDR payment will be tied to smaller increases in the student's income, mitigating concerns that the IDR payment may create payment shock. And payment shock is super huge in whether you can qualify for a mortgage, okay? If no payment is on the credit report, use 1% of the balance or the actual verified payment, okay? As long as we, the lender, can get documentation, or I'm sorry, the lender from your student loans can provide documentation showing that the IDR payment is zero, then that is the only time we can qualify you with zero for the monthly payment, okay? This is the only loan program out of all of them that will allow us to use an income-based repayment plan, and that is Fannie, okay? For Freddie, it says for student loans associated with income or IDR plan, the student loan payment is listed in the credit report, is the actual payment the borrower is making, and that payment should be used in qualifying. If no payment on the report, use 0.5% uh, of the balance, or actual verified payment cannot be zero, okay? FHA says if no payment on the credit report, which on this in this column, use 0.5% of the balance or actual verified payment. If the loan is in forbearance and shows no payment on the credit report, 0.5% or the verified payment must be used, okay? And then uh, VA says, hey, the greater of 5% of the balance shown on the credit report, again, divided by 12 uh, monthly payments or the actual payment. And then USDA last row says greater of 5% of the balance or actual documented payment cannot be zero. So that is the big key here is that um, it can, a lot of the times it cannot be zero, okay? So I share this with you to say, hey, I want everyone not to have student loans because student loans are, I would say besides credit, um, are very high on the top five reasons why uh, borrowers cannot qualify for a mortgage, okay? Because of student loans and the fact that we have to include that monthly payment no matter what most of the time. Okay, so if you have any questions, this is, this is why I don't want you to try to qualify yourself. And this is why at least one year before you're considering buying a home, that you should truly talk with a mortgage loan officer who knows these guidelines, because you on your own may think just like every other borrower that calls me, well, I don't pay those. Well, we still have guidelines that we must follow when it comes to student loans. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed, praying that there will be some relief in student loans or some type of reform. Um, but until then, I hope this information helps you. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week um, and stay safe. It's hot outside, be blessed. And until next Tuesday, it's your girl. <laughs>
talk to you then. Bye-bye.